Hi, welcome to this Freeform version 2025 feature video. This one will be discussing a variety of design tool enhancements as well as selection tool enhancements. The first one we're going to look at is the inclusion of a new points palette in our palette stack. As you can see, we've moved the annotation points tool from the analysis tools palette up into this points palette, as well as the filter for hiding and showing annotation points. And we've created a brand new tool called create points. This tool will allow you to create annotation points based on a number of inputs. The first is going to be the intersection between two lines. In this case, a line can be a two point 3D curve, or it can be a sketched line. We can also create points at the intersection of three planes. There's a mode for creating a point at the intersection between a line and a plane. Again, the line must be a two point 3D curve. You can create points at the intersection of pieces. And the last three modes all have to do with 3D curves. The first one allows you to create points at the endpoints of 3D curves. The next one allows you to create a single point along a curve. And the last one allows you to create an array of points along a curve. In this case, I'm going to select the array mode and choose my curve from the object list. I want 10 copies of this and I want them spaced out 25 millimeters apart. So I'll click apply and I get my 10 points and they're spaced evenly along this curve. Undo, and if I change the distance to 25 and select my curve again, applying this allows me to change where my points begin along the curve. So this is the distance from the start point to where the points begin. I'm going to undo this and hide this bone as well as the curve and turn on one of my small section bones. And we're going to look at the flat surface. For this, I will create, using the draw curve tool, two lines, one crossing this way and the other crossing that way. So now I have a target here in the center where I'd like to create my point. Go into the Create Points tool, pick the line intersection, choose my curves and click Apply. And now I have a point here at the center of this section of bone, but it's defined by the curves that I placed, so I chose where this is going to be created. This can be used to create an axis marker, snap that right there, and now I can go into my planes palette, click edit plane, and with the axis marker selected, if I click the orient to curve endpoint, it will create a brand new plane that is oriented to that axis marker. So now I have a plane that is perfectly fit to this flat surface at the location that I chose all of which was done very quickly and very easily. The clay and mesh selection tools have both gotten some enhancements. For starters, we now have a mode in the rectangle select for enforcing a square selection. This is something we've had requested for a while. So if I start drawing, you can see my cursor going up and down, and this is always maintaining a square ratio. We added a brand new circle select tool. This one here, the circle begins the center of your click, and then you draw the radius out, and you can make circular selections. This is also handy because you can use the erase tool and then remove and have circular selections. So at times when this would have been more effort to create a sketch in order to create that type of uh, selection or profile, now you can do this interactively within the selection tool. 
if I create a 3D select a 3D curve here that is on the surface of this model. For clay only, we have a loop select tool. This will select clay within a closed curve loop to a defined depth. So I'll set this to two millimeters and click this loop. And you can see that it has filled that region in. And of course, if I remove it, you can see that it does in fact only capture to the depth specified. Leaving the selection tools and going to the separate tool, we have enhanced this. So now using curve selections, you can select multiple curve regions simultaneously and have them all split at once. So for instance, if I turn on all of these curves right here, so we have separations for the neck, each of the limbs, and one in the body. I can hold control and pick all of these because I have my curve loop selection. If I click separ apply separation, it will now sequentially go through and separate all of the pieces in one operation. This is also supported to select the curves from the object list, which makes it handy for using things like Dynabot or for times when it's hard to select from the viewport. There are a couple new additions to the Fit to Selection tool. Both of these have to do with the points mode. So if we select points, we now have centroid point and center of sphere. I will select center of sphere and we can assume that we were given this model and we need to design something based off of this pin and we need to find the center of it in order to either place a sketch or create a piece of geometry snapped to that location. So I make a selection, click apply, we get our point. To verify that this is in fact the center of the sphere, I can create a new piece. I know that this is four millimeters. And if I take that brand new sphere, snap it to that point, turning on see-through, we can see that they line up perfectly. And this is a different calculation. This here is definitely trying to find the center of a sphere, whereas the other new mode is looking for the centroid or the geometric center of the selection. So for this model here, I will make my tool a lot larger, select the head, And this will give me the perfect center of that region that I've selected. All of our emboss tools have now been updated to include the option to create a new piece within the tool. This will significantly speed up some workflows where you would have created an embossed object and needed an original copy of that model to Boolean remove so you would have only the embossed area remaining. I already have design curves drawn on this model, so I will choose Emboss with Curve. Make sure that Create in New Piece is enabled. Select my curve and place my seed point within that curve loop. We can see that I am changing the clay coarseness of the new piece, so it is going to be finer clay than the original model. And I will click Raise. This will take a little bit longer time than the normal operation for embossing because it is changing the clay coarseness and performing the Boolean operation at the same time, but I didn't have to do any of that work. So we can see that it created exactly what we were hoping for. This is available now within 
emboss with curve, emboss with sketch profile, emboss area, emboss with image, emboss with wrapped image, and it was already available in emboss, emboss along curve. Finally, we have two new mirror tools inside Freeform. The first is Mirror Mesh. This will replace the old tool that was based inside the object list inside the Mesh Utilities menu. You have the ability to choose a plane, your local origin, or the world origin as the source. If you're using an origin, you can pick an axis and you have the ability to create a new mesh or simply mirror the mesh across the uh, target. For this, we have a boss piece that I have imported. I'm going to turn on my mirror and select it. Because preview is enabled, I already see it here in my viewport. And I click apply and I have a brand new piece. The other tool that has been added is Mirror Plane. For this, we have a sketch plane right here, and this is related to the uh, circuit board. I want to mirror this across to the other side, so I select my plane, and then I pick the plane that I want to mirror across. I want to create a new plane and I see my preview, so I click apply. And we have the result right there.